Welcome back. This is part two of the office chair series, and I've just done a couple of things. I just made this a bit bigger and put a piece there. I put the little ends on this here, and I put a little piece in here. And this is all one big piece, and I've come in here already. I've selected everything, and I've gone M merge by distance. That's a good idea. Now, if you were texturing this in Blender, it would be very easy. You wouldn't even have to unwrap it. If you wanted to use this procedural uh, materials, I'm going to use three materials on this. We're going to have metal, plastic, and leather or leatherette. And you could easily do that in Blender, although you'd have to maybe look up how to create a leather-like material. I'm going to be using Substance Painter, which will make it even easier. And of course, Substance Painter shines when you're adding stuff like dirt and dust and edge wear. Uh, I'm not really going to do much here, but you'll see what I'm going to do. Anyways, uh, we're still going to do an easy job here because I'm going to select it all and let's try Smart UV Project on the whole thing. I'm going to press U, Smart UV Project, and I'm going to use 0 0.002 for an island margin, and that's going to give me this. Now I'm going to pack this. You can use Blender to pack. I'm going to use Pack Master 3. Get out of there. And I'm going to press pack, give it a minute to search around and try to find the best position. Okay, it's done. And that is what I get. It looks like a bit of a mess. And understandably, Smart UV Project on something like this may not be the best thing to do, but let's give it a try because it might be just fine. I'm going to save and create an FBX for this now. And with that done, let's come over to Substance Painter. All right, I'm going to load that up. Switch this to OpenGL, select, and this was Office Chair Part 2, and press OK. There is our chair in Substance Painter, and the first thing we need to do is bake the mesh map. So come over to the Texture Set Settings, click on Bake Mesh Maps. I'm going to choose 248, uncheck ID and thickness, I won't need those maps. And you can do some other adjustment, but I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to let that go. As it goes, you can get a view of the, of the UVs. Some of them look pretty nice. Some of them are not so great, but let's see how it actually does. Let's turn on anti-aliasing just to make it look a bit nicer and give it a shot. All right, there's only one material in here. In fact, I'm going to call this Office Chair Part 2. And let's do this. Okay, so the, I'm going to use some preset materials for this. I'm already on materials here, and I come up here to search. And I'm just going to type in metal. And let's try this steel rust. So that comes on, and it goes everywhere. I only want that in certain places, mind you. But I'm just going to lighten this up just a small amount like that. And that's going to be just fine. All right, so there's my metal. Now I'm going to search here. Let's get rid of the search there. And I'm going to search for plastic. And I'll use this plastic mat. We'll drag that in. But I just want to have it a little bit less rough, so I'm going to drag the roughness down. I don't want it quite that shiny, and I don't want it blue. I'm going to want it black. Something like that, not full black. And now I want to decide where I want that. So in order to do that, I'm going to add a black mask. Now there's no plastic. It's back to the metal. I'm going to click on my polygon fill tool. And over here, I'm going to choose this one here, my mesh fill. This is a mesh, and I want that black. And I want the wheels black. So just each individual wheel. And then I will click on the paintbrush just to have another look. Now this metal, it's a little bit hard to see the metal versus the black. So I may come back and decide. I could have used the aluminum. So let's just drag that up. Okay, let's keep going uh, on the black. Choose the black mask, polygon fill, and I'm going to switch to this one here, UV chunk, and just drag a box over that. So now all of this is black plastic. Mm, not too sure about these pieces. I think I'm going to come back to polygon fill, mesh, and I think those 
pieces here are going to be black plastic. Let's give that a try and see if I like that. So not the best unwrap, uh, although smarter than me in a lot of ways. It is smart UV project, but it's not bad. I think I got them all. So that just just a little bit of metal showing through underneath there. I can double check those later. Uh, we've got some metal there. Okay, let's keep going on the mask. Uh, make sure I'm on this. I want that in black. That in black. But I want this piece here to be metal. And okay, back to here. I want the handle part in black plastic. And I want this and this in black plastic. And I want this knob in black plastic. So let's have a look at that. Let's drag the light around. Okay. Now, what I can do here is I can turn that off. I can come back over here and take this aluminum and drag it in instead. Maybe darken this. That's very clean aluminum. So maybe what I'll do is come over here, add filter, and use that matte finish filter. Um, that might be a nicer nicer one. It gives some grunge there. Maybe that's a bit much. Do that. That will kind of come into the plastic as well as you can see here, which might be a nice touch. Let's go with that and see how it goes. I can always go back to the other one if I want. So I go buy plastic. I've got my metal and I'm going to just click there. The next thing I want is a, is a leather for the seats. And I'm going to come over to the smart materials this time and I'm going to search for leather. Now, some of these I have downloaded and some of them come with Substance Painter. So, you know, you'd have to find what you want. The one that I, I thought I really liked was this leatherette damaged, but I don't want the damage. So let's drag that in here, put it on and open the folder. And I'm actually going to get rid of the damage. I just like this. All right, but I don't want it everywhere. And I also want to change the size of this. So I'm going to come to the leather pattern and open this up and change this four to, let's try seven. And I'll also increase my texture resolution. So we have that. And let's see if we can get that on just on the seat and see if that looks funny or see if it looks good. So back up to the folder. The way we do this is we add a black mask, come to the polygon fill, and I'm gonna use this, and this one is really easy. Click the parts of the seat, including these border pieces that I had created. Let me make sure we get all of that, this border piece and this border piece. And I think we've got everything we need, so let's have a look at this. All right. I think that's kind of an interesting kind of sort of cheap kind of look to it. And then you can experiment with different different types of leather if you if you want. But I think I'm I think I'm probably going to go with that. Uh, is that a good for the pattern here? Is that a good size? If we go up a little bit more, if I go to eight. Yeah, OK. You know, you could look at chairs with leather. I'm not sure how big these dots are supposed to be but that looks okay to me and I kind of want the plastic even a bit shinier I think maybe so let's come back to the black plastic and yeah I'm gonna drop the roughness even more so I get that and now how about just to top it all off at the very top maybe we we'll add a little bit of dirt see how that works I'm just going to choose a fill and alt click, alt click color and then click roughness. We'll drag the roughness all the way up. Change the color here to sort of a dark brown and add a black mask. We'll try a generator, the dirt generator here. Now that's gonna to be too much unless you want that look. I wanna drag it so it's barely noticeable, but it will go in the crevices and give almost, you know, that ambient occlusion kind of effect. You can see it coming on the back. Uh, let's just double check the back. And it's just, it's just in there on the model. All right, so it fills in some of these gaps and I, I like that look. So we could have that dirt there and maybe just finally on top, 
we could add a little bit of dust on here. So I'm going to go with a, uh, just, I'm just gonna go with color. Yeah, a whitish kind of a color, that's fine. And how about we use a smart mask for this? And I'll search for dust. And where is my, this dust plastic might be the one. And this is where smart UV project can fail um, because the dust doesn't sort of evenly go over it. But I don't mind what I'm seeing here very much. I just don't. I just don't want very much of it. I just want the slightest bit of this. Actually, I am going to leave that up because I'm going to decrease it here. I just want the tiniest bit of something that will break it up once in a while. You can, of course, go in here and paint, um, but I'm not going to bother to do that in this. Just, it's something that's that's there. And that is it for the chair. All right, so by all means, experiment with different materials. That's what I am going to go for, for my little funky chair. And uh, very easy to do, as you can see. Certainly would be easy to do in Blender, but you know, you would have to do some work to get a material like this. And and you would have to do some work to get the dust and the dirt in there. You certainly could do something similar, but uh, Substance Painter is, you know, something that I would prefer to use for this. All right, anyhow, that's gonna be it for the office chair. Thank you very much for watching. And I'm gonna move on and do some more simple objects, individual objects that'll be fun to model. I may end up finishing them off by coming over to Substance Painter. I know you don't all have that or use it. Hopefully you can do some of that in Blender and maybe I will do some as well, but the main fun part will be the modeling. All right, so come on back to the channel. I really appreciate seeing you here and hearing from you and take care of yourselves. See you soon.